what's happening guys let's talk about factory pattern all right now to get started uh, so in in my previous video we spoke about decorator pattern where you know I had started a car showroom right now this car showroom is going very well so I thought okay why not just experiment with bike and then fool people around <laughs> so you know what I uh, let's uh, let me get started with the uh, factory pattern by first talking about a, a, a bike factory. All right, so what I want is basically, well, let me just, just proceed as I do, I'll explain. So I'm having a bike class and I'll make this class abstract. Now abstract, you know the reason why, because we want to use polymorphism, right? And now I want to say public, and cost so every bike has a cost right and I should make this public abstract and cost okay and then public abstract string description this time I'm going to say get description get cost Okay, I don't know where is this even used. How come this turned to yellow? Anyway, oh, let's just make this capital D and get capital C. Okay, now I want to create a Java class. Okay, and then I'm going to call it, maybe let's give it some name as a dirt bike. Because you know, dirt bike is that bike that is a, a concrete class of the bike class. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you know, these there are certain things that I'm going to talk. Things like concrete class, um, you know, interface and everything. Please check out my previous videos. You'll be able to find them. So this time, my public class dirt bike, which is a concrete class, is going to extend from my abstract class bike. Now, as soon as I do that, you know what's going to happen. Asking, it's asking us to implement the methods, which is pretty good. Now, description for our dirt bike is, I'm going to say dirt bike. And then the cost of our dirt bike is, let's say 100, okay, 1000 bucks. Now I want to create in my bike company, I have different kinds of bikes. So yeah, so let me create a, a you know, sky flying bike. So this bike is so special, but still it's a, a bike. Okay. Um, description is, let's describe this bike as sky flying bike. That's why my company is so successful. My company is so successful because I do things like this sky flying bike and it's not going to be cheap it's about 5000 bucks re relatively decent I guess right <laughs> anyway so then uh, we have uh, water drowning bike so if you take this bike and go for a spin you'll never come back that's the uh, speciality of this bike so water drowning bike is again a bike now if I do this, it's going to ask for a description and it is going to be a water drowning. Just forget the spelling now. I don't care. Water drowning bike. And the cost is going to be just less because, you know, 10 bucks. Uh, you know its purpose, right? <laughs> and let's, uh, you know what? I, I Let me just create one more and we'll be done. This time I'm going to have a sport bike, a sports bike, which is going to again extend from our bike abstract class. And it's going to have these two things. Again, description is sports bike. The cost for the sports bike is 660 bucks. That should be fair. Now, 
I let me just create a, a Java class and say showroom okay bike showroom so this is my bike showroom okay now inside my bike showroom I will have a bike object okay and then um, I will have a name for the type of bike that my factory should produce a uh, string bike name and then I'm going to call this as initially I'm going to say I want a dirt bike okay now you know what I'm going to do I'm going to put this inside my PSVM you know what that is right all right let me just copy I've already copied and then I'm pasting it in here okay bike name bike all right so we have these two variables in in our main method now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some dirty code which is not supposed to be written but you have to help me why uh, in justifying it's it's a dirty code but let me get started if okay bike name equals equals ignore case and dirty bike dirt bike okay dirt bike then i'm going to say bike is equal to new dirty bike dirt bike okay and again i'm going to use another else if bike name equals ignore case uh, let's say flying bike sky flying bike sky flying bike okay and I'm going to say bike equals in that case it's going to be a new sky flying bike all right else if bike name equals ignore case okay and then I'm going to say sports bike then in that case bike object is going to be a new sports bike okay else if my last else if and if bike name equals ignore case dirt bike is taken care sky flying bike is taken care sports bike is taken care oh we have not taken care the water drow oh did i say drawing bike oh man i meant water drowning bike but that's fine forget about the spelling mistake you know i don't know any spelling right yeah so that's the problem with me yeah so bike equals new uh, water drowning bike all right now if i say s out and say bike dot get description bike object is bike is oh it says probably not initialized yeah so it says I've not initialized it you know what I'm going to say null forget it and yeah let there be a now the let there be a possibility that it could cause a null pointer exception I'm fine with it uh, bike cost is so bike cost is bike dot get cost all right so now if I if I try and run this program hmm I said run this not something else what's that that's because bike showroom inside this we have bike dot get description uh, what's the issue here exception in thread main null pointer exception get description why is this causing us grief I've dynamically loaded the bike name what's wrong with that oh man 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 my bad my real bad I 
yeah, I've done it right. So string bike name, I thought I haven't initialized this. I've done it here. String bike name is dirt bike. Yeah. If bike name equals ignore case. Oh, okay. This is the problem. Dirty bike. That should have been the exact match, right? Now, if we run this again. Yeah, so bike is dirt bike and the cost is thousand bucks. So yeah, everything seems to be good in our bike showroom. And what do you think is not so good about this code? Well, number one good bad thing is you have a bunch of ifs and else ifs. Okay, let's just keep that aside. But apart from that, what is not good? Well, you might say, oh, Rakshat, you don't know any spelling. Yeah, I agree. That is not good though, but it's not, <laughs> that is not our concern at this point. So what is um, a good design? I mean, let's think about it from design's point of view. Why is this a bad code? Let's say we have a class for formatting the bike display. Okay. And inside that we have this decision making code. Yeah. Let me put it that way. So let's just imagine that this decision making code, right? Why is it called a decision making code? Cause you know, it's deciding which concrete class to be implemented, right? So if, if this, if this decision making code was present inside that formatting class, is it such a good idea? Well, absolutely not. Why? Because you know, single response, uh, single responsibility principle states that one class must be doing just one job. And if we are trying to do a decision in a class, which was responsible for formatting the output, then it's not such a good idea. So it violates our single responsibility principle. So then how can we, uh, you know, get rid of this and put it elsewhere so that we, we don't worry about decision making here. So the reason uh, we have to put it out is because first of all, it's such a bad design because, because you know, it's just violation of design principle. Okay. With that being said, let's, let's find a way to, to make this thing work. Let me just create a factory called as bike factory. All right. So this is my bike factory class, right? And inside my bike factory class, let me just, uh, grab this entirely. And then I'm going to create a public static um, bike, which is going to retire, return a bike instance. And I'm going to say create bike. And then it's going to accept an argument. We'll call it the name. So it's going to accept the name of the bike that you want it to be the type of the bike that you want to be created. And then it's going to return that object. So I have this logic, but anyway, I'm going to rename this to bike name. Okay. And, uh, I'll have a bike object. Okay. Which is initially null and I'm going to return the bike object here like so. Why is this uh, underlined? That's because it's duplication of code. Let's get rid of this code here. And we'll keep this main class plain and simple. And this is organized now. So what did we do? This is the core of the factory pattern. Uh, so we create a class, call it, uh, we, we create a class and call it whatever object you want it to be created and concatenate it with the factory keyword. So let's say you want to produce a bunch of candies, then you create a candy factory, animal production, then you say animal factory. So here we have bike, right? So you call it bike factory. And then uh, there is a method uh, called create bike. You know, for every factory, there is a method called create the object of the factory. In, in this case, the object of the factory is bike. So we have create bike and then it's going to accept a bike name, which is a string character and it's going to check. Okay. So if bike name equals dirty bike, then create a new dirty bike. If bike name equals, you know, what's going on here. I'm not going to explain that. And then finally it's going to return the bike instance. You see the power of polymorphism here. Actually you see the power of abstraction here. 
you see bike is an abstract class and then wherever we are doing this right let's say uh, user passed in water draw drawing bike okay my bad spelling mistake so, and then it would do bike equals new water drawing bike which is pretty good right and then it would return that instance so that is the power of polymorphism okay uh, actually abstraction I mean I tend to use these keywords uh, in, a, in an intertwined manner which is not so good but please understand whenever I say uh, here in this case it's obviously it's it's abstraction because of the power of abstraction we're able to achieve this 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 again this is all polymorphism here but yeah so that's the idea of a factory uh, class and then you know what I'm going to simply say bike factory dot create bike and then you pass in whichever bike you want to be created in which case it's bike name you see this main method is just doing one thing which is initializing and printing that's all its job is it's doing that and um, you know otherwise if we had kept that decision making code here then that that clearly violated the op, you know uh, number one it violated single responsibility principle and number two it also violated open close principle because let's say you want to add another bike then you have to come in here inside the main method and then add that piece of code which is such a bad design and sometimes you might create masses of disaster while you change your code and break your code eventually so so you know that is something that you should always realize that um, factory pattern is is pretty pretty simple initially I'm not going to talk in this video about abstract factory or factory methods but this is the basic idea of of the factory pattern and if I run this again oh I made a debug let me run this not a debug not debug this so bike is dirty dirt bike and it's thousand bucks let me just make it um, you know sports bike this time you see I all I do is I just change this name everything is taken care for me automatically you see see that power thing you see that power you know that's a big thing you see you just change one thing you're not changing anything you're not changing the factory you're not changing anything you see that is how you write the code if you had hard-coded everything then you should have changed sports bike okay then you should have changed it from dirty bike equals new sports bike. that's a mess you don't want that and you want to have clean elegant and lovely piece of code that everybody loves you when someone uh, you know when they 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 take I mean just forget it yeah <laughs> so here is the design for our class you see bike is an abstract class these are the two abstract methods one thing you should notice is bike factory is used to create each and every class so that is one important thing so this is the class called bike factory and it contains a method called create bike which takes in a particular argument Specifically, in our case, it's going to be the name of the bike, uh, actually name of the type of the bike. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. In the next video, I'm going to talk about factory methods and I'm also going to talk about abstract factory. Yeah, that's it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share.